All right, guys, our next guest is the coach of champions and some of the best to ever do it in MMA. It's hard to imagine someone uh, who's worked with the likes of Daniel Cormier, Luke Rockhold, Kane Velasquez, Khabib, and now Islam Markachev. But here he is, one of the best coaches in the game today. Uh, you know, from American Kickboxing Academy, and of course, all of the ama amazing legacies that we see in the UFC. Javier Mendez, welcome to Submission Radio after a huge UFC 302. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on again. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure with you guys. The pleasure's all ours, man. There you are, ripping San Jose. Dude, congrat That's right, San Jose. congratulations yeah. on, on the massive win at 302. What a fight, man. Um, yeah. I want to ask you, how does this one compare to some of the others, man? What's, what's the feels? Uh, well, unfortunately for me, I've done so many of them that my nerves and my excitement, it, it is, um, you know, it's diminished quite a bit. I really rarely get nervous. I wasn't nervous for this one at all. Habib goes, Habib goes coach, are you nervous? I go, no. He goes, no. I go, wow. no, I'm not nervous. I go, we're going to win. I don't know if it's going to be easy fight or hard fight, but we're going to win. He goes, coach, I'm nervous. I said, of course, you're a rookie. <laughs> you got to be nervous. So. Uh, yeah, so no, Habib I, I, was I, I, more nervous than you in this one. If you guys would have watched him in the corner, you'd have, you'd have realized he was standing up and down, hitting the table, and you know, and the commission kept telling him to sit down, sit down, and I'm like telling him, to tell him, sit down, calm down, calm down, just like old times. Yeah, just like old times. it was awesome. <laughs> it was more fun watching him and I in the corner than than some part of the fight. You know, not all of the, the fight was incredible. Don't get yeah, me wrong, but it was funny with Habib and I also in the background. Sounds like a man enjoying himself. Sounds like Dennis and I at the bar sometimes hitting tables, being told to sit down. <laughs> yeah. um, is it, do you feel like this for all your fighters, or is it specifically Islam? Because you know he's he's as they say that damn good. It, no, for all my fighters, I I, I don't uh, you know I don't. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, if we were in a tough, tough fight situation and I thought we were going to probably we were the underdogs, I probably would get some nerves. Mm. But I was so confident going into the fight, even when we hit all that adversity, I was still confident that, that he was going to pull it off no matter what. So uh, the nerves didn't really hit me at all. Uh, you know, and I was more worried about Habib as the nerves than I was mine because I didn't have any. <laughs> well, let's get into the fight a little bit, because so the first round we saw Islam get dusted down. And I guess uh, for a lot of us, when we previewed the fight, we're like, all right, like we know Islam will get dusted down, but it's just a matter of how long. And when we saw Dustin down there in those bad positions, a lot of people watching the fight live were like, oh, wow, maybe this is it. Like maybe this is where it finishes. What were you thinking when you saw Islam get dusted down? And were you surprised when you saw that Dustin was able to survive some of those positions this time around? Um, well, when he took him down right away, that was a, a perfect game plan that Habib and I and all the coaches, Saif Safula and Magomed, the head coach at, at uh, you know, Abdumanab's gym in Dagestan, we, uh, we had devised that that's what we were going to do. We discussed it. We discussed it with Islam before the fight uh, that this is the game plan and stick to it. He did. Perfect. Like I told you guys, you tell him what to do, he sticks with it. And, and he did. And, and so when he executed it, I was like, thinking, okay, this is what I expected. And so the first round went exactly like I expected, exactly like uh, I wanted the first round. There, there was also like after the, uh, after the first round, Dustin's uh, takedown defense really started sort of playing well. And there was a lot of moments where he was stuffing takedowns. What, what was ho happening in the corner between you and Habib? Well, not so much between you and Habib, but just corner-wise in general. I think that's when Habib was the most animated that's what he was sort of like you know getting almost frustrated what, what exactly was happening in that moment what was he saying well i don't know what he was saying because it was all russian so I, i'd like to tell you he was saying this he was saying that i don't know what he was saying all i know is he was encouraging him motivating him to keep going all i know is what i told him after the right at the very end of that second round i said hey you got to get him back in the game and that was a that was a too close of a round uh, you need to get him back in the game. You need to get him back in the game. We need him getting motivated again. We need him back on task. You know, that's what I was telling Habib. Then we go and give Islam the instructions, uh, you know, after the second round. And, uh, you know, I was able to say some words to him, stay focused, stay relaxed, keep on the distance. But what Habib told him, bro, I couldn't tell you guys because I they don't teach me Russian. They don't want me to know Russian. So I still don't know enough to know what they were saying. You know, all I know is that Habib is an unbelievable corner. He is unbelievable motivator. And uh, I'm, I'm an unbelievable under 
uh, how do you say, a person that doesn't learn well <laughs> in <laughs> languages, I still don't understand what they're saying. And I, I, I kind of wish I could just click like this and I could understand what they're saying and it would be much better for me. But uh, I didn't understand what they were saying. I'm assuming he was motivating him, telling him to stay on track like we discussed. I'm assuming that. Well, yeah, you, you know a lot when it comes to all sorts of things. So there's probably not enough space in your brain to learn another language with all the techniques and all the knowledge that you know in MMA and kickboxing. But I do want to know, um, in that moment, it's interesting. So you asked Khabib uh, to get Islam back on track, right? Yes. What were you, what, what were you worried about um, that sort of made you want to say that? Because I guess that we spoke about this before the fight. One of the most dangerous things about Dustin is he draws people into a bit of a battle, doesn't he? He kind of gets them to sort of abandon their game plan and just start throwing with him. Yes. At one point, yes. at what point did you start to get a little bit nervous about that? And um, what, what what did you see out there that sort of made you want to go up to Khabib and sort of say that? Get, I didn't get nervous, but, I, but that's what my job is, right? That's why you mm. guys ask me, what do I predict? I say five rounds because I don't want to be out of the game. I want to be in the game, you know? So so I looked at the momentum starting to switch. And I looked at that second round is super close, super, super close in my opinion, because that's the stuff to take downs, you know? And he, he, he fought better and he was able to land some decent shots. So, you know, in Islam, uh, you know, tried as much as he did, kind of went a little bit away from what we wanted him to do. So I needed I needed more motivated. Uh, that's why I told Habib that that's the reason, because Justin did a good round, really good. He stopped a lot of the takedowns that I personally, speaking, I uh, didn't think he was going to be able to, but he did. He did. He's, he became uh, someone that I thought was going to be a tough fight, but he actually became tougher than I even I thought. So kudos to him. And he he's a warrior. He did a great job. And, uh, you know, that's all you can expect is you give out your best. And, and honestly speaking, I think Dustin gave it his best performance on, on that night. Oh, 100 percent. I also wanted to ask about Islam striking, man. What did you like? Obviously, as, a, as with a, your kickboxing background, what did you think of his striking and how it looked? Because like. Not only did he have a lot of moments of success against Dustin, where people thought, you know, obviously that's Dustin's realm, but also overall he outstruck Dustin, which is a pretty crazy statistic. What did you think of the striking in this one? Well, I've always told you guys, Islam's the most well-rounded uh, lightweight uh, fighter in history, you know, and he can do it all. I told you guys, I said he could strike, he can, he can, uh, can do everything. So nothing surprises me with him on what he could do. It's, it's you know, what what, what does. Um, what does get us a little bit, and I try to implore on him to kick. He wasn't kicking at all because his first kick he missed, just like Dustin. Dustin threw the first uh, the first low uh, calf kick, and after that, Dustin didn't really kick much at all. Both of them, both of them stopped kicking, and I was like, man, that, that was one element. Since they were standing, they they, they both needed to be utilized, and and uh, uh, Islam for whatever reason uh, didn't kick. You know, and like I said, I was not able to speak to him as much as I wanted to because, you know, Habib and him were speaking in Russian. So I, I didn't know what was going on, you know, but the game plan was to keep him motivated, stay on task and never, never, never give up on the idea of taking him down. And he didn't, he didn't, he did not. Mm. So, so just, just quickly to jump in there, Dennis, I know, I know you say you weren't nervous. I know you sort of reached a point in the game where you've seen so many fights and corners, so many guys and seen so much from Islam. I guess one of the things that had people, um, somewhat worried was obviously the staff, right? The staff infection heading into the, yeah. the fight. Was there any moment or was there any curiosity from you in terms of like, how is he going to look in the later rounds? Because we've seen a lot of fighters look phenomenal in the beginning and then they get a little bit drained, whether it's because of the staff or the the medication that they're on. Um, and I think is, Islam looked look great given the circumstances. Was that in the back of your mind at all? No, not at all. And the reason being is because we dealt with staff on many occasions with so many different fighters, you know, and the mm. fighters will sometimes overrides what staff does. Luke Rockhold, for yeah. instance, had staff against the week up against Leidman, and look what he did. He yeah. did unbelievable. The mind overrides it. So I didn't want to use that as an excuse. And honestly speaking, uh, as a start of camp, when I when I saw Islam, when I was in, uh, you know, Brick, New Jersey at the Nick Catone's gym, uh, you know, uh, Islam goes, coach, I got a problem. I go, what? And he showed me. I went, oh, crap. <laughs> but wow. I, said, I said, thank God we have plenty of time. Antibiotics, you'll be done. So when, when was that, Javier? Do you remember date? Well, uh, how far out of the fight? May 7th. May 7th. Oh, wow. May 7th. Okay. Oh, it's like a good yeah. month or so. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I don't I don't even want to play that up. So Connor made it more 
uh, you know, evident than, than it actually was. I, I don't think it played a factor, guys. I really don't because, you know, I went out and said, and I was very truthful in my comments that he's the best he's ever looked. Mm. It was. And I was I'm not going to take that back. That's yes, the best I've ever seen him look, best prepared. I've seen him go into a fight. I know from Islam, he said, didn't give me explanations, but he said this was a horrible camp for him in Dagestan or wherever he was at in Russia. And I said, okay, but, but you're looking great now. So to me, what was then was then. What is now is now. You know, so the camp didn't start out great for him, obviously. And then the staff, obviously, coming to, to Brick, New Jersey, didn't help either. But we weathered all that. He stayed focused. He stayed consistent. And I'm telling you, he looked fantastic. He looked fantastic in sparring. Fantastic. He looked fantastic. I've never seen him look better. Never. Mm. Kicking, punching, takedowns, everything. Control, conditioning. No, I, no. Uh, he was ready to go. He was ready to go. No, no excuses on, on on him being ready. He was ready, hundred percent ready. What What was it about the camp in Dagestan? Like, what What happened? He, he didn't really tell me. All I know is uh, he had staff when I said him. That's it. That's the only thing I know. I know yeah. he had staff. That was it. But other than that, I didn't because I didn't want to know. It's like I don't need to know what happened back there. All I need sure. to know is what we have now. And I felt that what I had is the best Islam uh, that I could ever have up to this point in his career. And that's what I had. I had I had that best guy. So and, and to be honest with you, and I think that's why he was able to do what he did, because most fighters with less experience and, and less ability would have probably crumbled under what uh, Dustin did. They would probably crumble. But he didn't. He didn't crumble once. You know, the more steam that Dustin brought, the more that, that uh, Islam gave back and more, you know. So to me, it was one of those situations where, you know, you had a super tough fight, but you had a fighter that is the champ and is, in my opinion, pop pop number one. And he proved it. He, he, he went to all adversity on this one, but he never once looked like he was behind. Never one time was he behind. He was always in control, always looking for the takedowns, always looking to level change. He was always listening to what Habib was saying. I can't say me 100% because, you know, I wasn't able to get many words in with him, mm. uh, you know, but but he does listen extremely well. He's the best uh, coached uh, guy that I have as far as listening to his corner. And Habib is a, number one with him. Habib's number one. There was a moment after the fight where, um, you know, he got, he got the choke on Dustin, he got the win. And a bunch of the coaches sort of jumped into the octagon. I was trying to look for you. I'm like, where's Javier? Is he jumping the cage? Is he taking his time? But I saw I saw the corner cam where everyone jumped out and they ran. They hugged Islam. It was quite an emotional moment, I think, for the entire team. Can you take us into that a little bit? What was it like being a part of that? It really looked like, yeah, a well, special you know moment. When when he finished them, you know, to me it was like, like okay, we got it. You know, I knew we were going to get it. it. I felt that Dars was going to sink in, and then when he got it, I said, okay, it's in. And I said, so I was over. So for me, celebration in my mind already happened. And those guys went a little crazy. I jumped over the cage and the whole bit. <laughs> my God! And then you know, these guys get so emotional. They're they're they love each other so much. When they win, they all win. So you saw how crazy they get, you know. And uh, uh, Usman, his his you know his training partner was one of the main sparring partners for him. He ran into the cage. He was actually supposed to go in after, like you know, he was invited to come into the cage after he was he was given permission. But the way he did it, obviously the security got on him and they escorted him out. And uh, speaking to him, he said that you know he was expecting to go in. But the fight got him so wound up because it was such a, a you know back and forth type war that that he he didn't remember. All he remembered is next thing you know the fight's over. Next thing you know he's in the ring. Next thing you know he's being escorted out. You know, and I'm I'm just like, hey, that's emotions for you. You know, sometimes you don't you don't think clearly and you react on on emotion. You don't think about it. You just react. And in that case, that's what happens. So that's what happens with a lot of these guys. They get super excited. I was at one point in my life like that, but now I'm I'm uh, more reserved. You know, and you know I let everybody else have their, their their time when they can go in the cage. I don't care. I don't. I, I can stay on the outside all day long. I don't. I don't try to push my way in there. Get in there. I don't. I don't get in that. I we won. That was all I needed. The victory. So I don't need to be in the cage. And here I am. Here I am. Blah blah blah. You know. The only reason why I got in. Uh, went into the cage is the, the the guy that was handling the cage he goes man everybody's in you might as well go in too <laughs> <laughs> that's so, funny so yes. I, I went in because if he would have said stay out I wouldn't have had no problem I'd have stayed out you know mm -hmm. we got the victory 
we got the victory. I, 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 I can stay on the outside and enjoy the victory for them and enjoy watching them. It gives me big joy to see my guys uh, be successful like that. And I love my guys. So for me, every one of those guys are family to me. Every one of those Dagestanis are my family. They're, they're, they're beautiful guys. Beautiful, man. I can't, I can't express how much gratitude and uh, loyalty I have to those guys for who they are for me. That's awesome, man. That's, that's really nice of you. Um, you mentioned something before. You mentioned, obviously, pound for pound. It was something that got brought up afterwards. Dana White spoke you know, at length about why he believes John Jones is number one pound for pound. I guess the argument for Islam would be in terms of activity. Um, where do you stand on this whole you know, pound for pound debate? It, for a while, it's sort of been like John Jones, Islam, and that's kind of where the debate stands. Well, Dana has his points and he has his opinion. And let, let's see what the overall judges say. I mean, I have my points. I have my opinions too. And and uh, John Jones is definitely uh, what he did getting the the heavyweight, the light heavyweight, never never losing the fight. You know that has a big big variance on on, on you know Dana made common sense on, on what he said, but I still hold true to my guy, you know, and that's what we are, loyalty, right? We're loyalty above anything. So I'm loyal to my guy. So my guy's P for P. That's it, you know. Uh, but yeah, Dana's got good points. Mm. I, th- I definitely think that what Islam's accomplished is really impressive. And it, I think it's one of the f- fun things about the pound for pound thing, because it really is one of those uh, conversations you have with someone at the bar over a couple of drinks for a bit of fun to be like, no, this guy's the pound for pound. Yeah. This guy's the pound for pound. Or this guy's the, you know what I mean? So, but I definitely think it's, it's he's in the conversation for sure. And what he's accomplished is incredible. Um, I know you mentioned we spoke about the staff infection a little bit, but I mean, I can't imagine doing the weight cut with the infection and the fact that you guys have wanted to go to 170 for a while now. I can't imagine doing that weight cut down to lightweight would have been fun for uh, Islam. Um, Dana said actually that he hasn't really spoken much with the team about wanting to go to 170. But you mentioned that's something that Islam would like to do. When yeah. Islam's mentioned he, that's something that he'd like to do. Um, if you were a betting man, would you put money on Islam fighting Leon Edwards if he beats Bilal at UFC 304 next over fighting again at lightweight? If I was, a, I never bet on the fights ever. So um, of course, of course. If I, if I, you know, if, if you had to I, guess, if I had to want what I want, I would say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Only because I want it to happen. <laughs> so yes, I'll say yes because I want it to happen. So yes, I, I'm a betting man in this case. Yes, yes, yes. I would, I would bet that it's going to happen. Yes, good, good juju. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. Um, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll be there sending out the the good juju. Um, speaking of good, and I, I have a follow up on that, by the way, Hub, but just quickly, speaking of good juju and being betting men and betting on yourself, uh, obviously, when it comes to betting on yourself, you got to look after yourself and especially your, your downstairs section, call them whatever you want, you know, the golden nuggets, the knee noggers, the, the knee knockers, the thigh slappers, whatever, our good friends at Manscaped, call them the boys. Uh, not every man has kids, but hey, every man has a couple of boys downstairs in the downstairs section. And uh, when you're looking after the boys, the little guys. Uh, who better to look to than our good friends at Manscaped who have all your grooming dreams covered. Uh, every man knows how scary it can get when going for that close shave below the waist. And that's why we trust Manscaped for all our sensitive areas. They've got the Lawnmower Familia, including the Lawnmower 3.0 Plus, the 4.0 Pro, and the 5.0 Ultra. Three ball trimmers. How good is that? Uh, your fellas downstairs, they need love too. Each trimmer is equipped with a skin-safe technology and LED spotlight and unique features for grooming needs. They're waterproof, uh, travel lock as well. How good is that? Manscaped have you covered also for ear and nose hair trimmers, also beard shavers, absolutely everything under the sun. I used to use mine even to shave my head. It is the cutting edge of cutting pubes. They've got other products as well that'll make you smell A1 downstairs, 20% off with the code submission, and you get some cheeky free shipping. How good is that? Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. It's the best in the business, and there's 20% off and free shipping. Changes the game. Unbelievable products on the website. Jump on today and use that code with submission to support the program and support yourself. Mm. Just have going back to like obviously Leon Edwards. I know that's the fight that you guys want. It's it's something that's been so important for for Leon for such a long time. Um, there is of course the the matter of Ahmed Sarukian. He's obviously been climbing his way up the ranks. Uh, I wanted. I think like Dana White said, he's the logical next step. That's the fight that they want to do. But from your perspective and the team's perspective, how important is that uh, of a fight for you guys? Because I think while Armin's obviously deserving of it, 
there is obviously the history there and the fact that that is already a guy that Islam's beaten. Where do you stand? Is it a, is it a fight you're excited about, interested about? How do you feel about it? For for us, it's not it's not it's not important. He's a definitely dangerous guy, super super dangerous, good, good wrestling. You know, he has a lot of attributes. He's young, twenty what twenty seven, twenty eight years of age. Islam fought him, I believe, when he was twenty two, and that was a super close fight. You know, and uh, you know uh, what I what people don't know is Islam was super sick on that fight. But hey, forget about that. Let's just say it was a super good fight, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know he's earned his spot, and he you know. Uh, Armin's going to get a shot, whether whether it be with Islam uh, now or later. He's going to get a shot. He deserves it, and uh, he's earned that right. But with Islam, hey, man, if you can give me that welterweight title shot, you know, if things are aligned perfectly, I'll take it, you know, because he wants that legacy fight. And that's going to, let's face it, you know, you defend your title at lightweight or you go for the welterweight title. What's going to give him more legacy? <laughs> you obviously know it's 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 the welterweight. What did Dana White say? Uh, about John Jones because John Jones went on to fight heavyweight and he dominated in heavyweight. So therefore he's in his eyes, he's pound for pound. So for that very reason, you know, I would want what's best for Islam and what's best for Islam is to, to have the higher challenges that would make his legacy stronger. And that would make his legacy stronger to be able to do a two division uh, you know, champion because not many of them have it. You know that there's there's Connor, there's Randy Couture, there's John Jones, there's DC. Um, how many other guys? I'm missing maybe a couple guys. Uh, PJ Penn. Uh, who else am I missing, guys? Amanda it's Nunes. Maybe, Amanda Nunes. Randy Couture. Uh, Randy Couture. Well, I, re- I mentioned Randy. All right, so, right, right, so, right. Yeah. So I think that yeah. That the, the, so you're joining an elite group. Oh, oh, that's why right. uh, Henry Segudo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves his cred, yeah. you know. But uh, Alex yeah, Pereira, so, so. Alex Pereira. Sorry, there you go. There, now I think we're done, right? Yeah, we're done. Uh, let's say, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But still, that's a, that's a, that's an elite group. Mm. It's an elite group, you know. So, so you know, uh, we said Connor, didn't we say Connor? I think Should've so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right, all right. we're good. Then. <laughs> Well, it's incredible as well because DC, obviously, one of your guys, and if Islam can achieve that, then you know you're you're the coach of two fighters who are double yeah. champs which is also heard of. um just before we wrap i just want to finish on this uh javier you mentioned dustin and uh, the respect that you guys had for him there he sort of put it all on the line he was able to make some improvements and make this fight uh you know a bit of a war a bit of a back and forth war um 100%. if this is the last time that we see dustin in that octagon um you know what do you think of the legacy that he leaves behind in mma and uh like, what are a few words that you can sort of say about him now that you've, you know, prepared for him a couple of times and gotten him to know pretty well from that perspective? I don't, I don't really know him. I just know he's a great person. Uh, and I would say he was one of the best to ever do it. Uh, he was one of the best that didn't accomplish the, the, that, that goal of winning that title that probably deservingly so. And probably other areas or other years, he probably would have, you know, it wasn't for the two Dagestanis that were in his way, you know, and then, well, you know, you got to remember Charles Oliveras too. He, he was in his way also. So he came, he came, the only one he didn't come close with was, was Habib. Habib was not a close fight, you know, but the other two, he came close. So, you know, he's that good. And uh, my things for him is that, you know, hang, hang your head up high. I mean, you've got nothing but, uh, but proud, uh, you know, accomplishments that you, you, not many people can do. And, and he's been able to do that for so many years, bro. How many fights is he had? Close to 50, if not over 50 MMA fights. The guy's a legend. hundred mm. percent, man. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think his career, especially uh, like the way he turned things around and then it came to lightweight and then had some massive, massive fights, didn't win the belt, but he's been part of some massive, iconic, um, historic moments. And, um, yeah. he's had some great rivalries along the way. Fighter. Yeah, he beat Connor two times, legacy big giant fights, and he was dominant, you know. And uh, no, man, he's he's one of the greats. Uh, you know, he'll go, he'll go down in the Hall of Fame, you know, a hundred percent. You know, I, I, yeah, he hundred percent is going to be in the Hall of Fame. For you sure. know, deservingly, you know, and is a, is a humble and a good man. Uh, he's, I mean, hey, nothing but mutual respect for him. I don't know him, but everything I see about him is is is, is stand up guy. You know, very much respect, very big respect. Totally, man. Uh, as we let you go, have the the return timeline for Islam. I I, I think I know what it's going to be. I think at, at this point it's somewhat easy to guess. But when when ideally would you like to see him come back? I uh, I don't know. Can you tell me? As I would like to know. Well, I'm guessing the Abu Dhabi <laughs> card, right in October. That would be my Abu guess. Dhabi card. 
it would make sense, right? If Islam is ready to go during that time, everything all the line, everything aligns perfect. That would be, you know, because Umar is fighting August third. So mm-hmm. you know, uh, Oct- was it October twenty sixth when they're doing the Abu Dhabi card again? I w- I was told. So if that's the case, you would think that and Hamza's just gonna fight, all right? So yeah. um, it, it could. Be, I mean, and they, usually that Abu Dhabi card, they usually want to have like stars uh, studded type of, you know, uh, people from that region like Hamza, yeah. Islam. Umar. So Umar, you can count out. Uh, Shavkat, uh, you know, also a uh, pirate, you know, and, and uh, you know, so all those guys I would think were, you know, are in the likely uh, running to be on, you know, headlining that card. So mm. the likelihood of Islam being the, the main on that one is high. Also, also Shemaya is high to it. Should he become successful with Robert Whitaker? I would think that, that uh, th- those are the two premier runners uh, for, for a title. You know, and and I'll just throw this one out. <laughs> if, should should Umar get by, you know, a uh, Corey and, and and stay super super, you know, healthy, maybe we'll get my wish and we'll get the title shot in uh, 2024 in Abu Dhabi, like I wanted. So I'm just throwing that one out. There. Triple title wow. fight: it's Hamzat, just- Umar, and then uh, and then Islam. How about that? How, how about that for an Abu Dhabi card? That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be a hell of a card. I'll tell you what, Leon Edwards versus Islam Akachev has a good sound to it as well, doesn't it? But we'll see what happens. Guys, make sure to follow Javi and Mendez on social media at AKA Harv for all the latest updates. Coach, congratulations. I know that you, uh, you've you experienced a lot of these moments, but it was uh, very, very special for a lot of fans on the weekend. And uh, we're, we're very proud of you and happy for all the success you guys have had. Um, another great moment in the record books for you. So congratulations to you and the team. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on again.